I go for refuge until my light and to the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha. While my humiliation is practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to bend for all sentient beings. I go for refuge until my light and to the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha. While my humiliation is practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to bend for all sentient beings. I go for refuge until my light and to the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha. While my humiliation is practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to bend for all sentient beings. I go for refuge and turn my light into the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha. By my accumulation through the practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to bend for all sentient beings. Sanyu Juda Zogyu Jonam La Chanju Bado Dane Gyapsuch Age Jin Zogyu Be Zonam Gyu Dola Benjir Sanyu Jubare Shu Sanye Jola Zoge Jonam La Chanju Bado Dani Yapsuch Dage Jin Zoge Be Sonam Ke Dola Penjir Sanye Jubare Shu Sanye Jola Zoge Jonam La Chanju Bado Dani Yaps Sonam Ke Dola Penjir Sanye Jubare Shu Om ye dharma hetu prabhavam hetu tesham dathagato yavatat tesham chayo nirodha eva bhati mahashramanaya swaha Om ye dharma hetu prabhavam hetum te sham datha gato yavatat te sham chaya evam vati mahashramana yeswa Om ye dharma hetu prabhavam hetum desham datha gato yavatat desham chayo nirodha eva vati mahashramana yeswaha all phenomena arise from causes. The causes are taught by the Tathagata, cessation causes as well as taught by the grace here. Eyata <coughs> Om Gate Gate Aragate Arasam Gate Bodhiswatyata Om Gate Gate Aragate Parasam gate bodhiswatyata Om gate gate Paragate Parasam gate bodhiswatyata Okay, any questions before we move further? Yes. Is this big speak? When we were building the argument of, of emptiness, our group was looking at the flower and was seeing a flower, while the other group was looking at the flower and was seeing atoms, protons, neurons, electrons. And then when we went to the X-ray, the other 
group was seeing emptiness, but that we're seeing atoms, electrons, does not mean that we're seeing emptiness. So that is my question. What's the question? Uh, how, how, does, how does seeing the atoms equal directly to emptiness? Oh. <clears throat> okay. Hey, it's not my job, it's your job. <laughs> <laughs> Group is your job. And okay, the, the lady over there. Thank you, thank you. What's your name? Sveta. Sveta. <clears throat> thank you. It's a very good answer. Over there. Very good. Okay, so the I'm so glad so many hands coming up. Thank you. Okay, so in fact, I'm very happy that the said answers are coming up, and there's a deep interest there, and the answer is also very good. Um, so what is expected <clears throat> is that I would highly suggest that all of us, including myself, to be consistent with these studies. It's not just like one retreat and then finished. And be consistent. Uh, I would say be attached with some programs, like, say, the long-term programs. Um, it's not only, the, yes, of course, Tibet House, we offer programs, long-term programs, but there are other institutes also. They also offer long-term programs, but very standard ones. 
standard long-term programs where there's emphasis on bodhicitta, emptiness, and emptiness also, not just I'm giving you something within a short span of time, but the best would be to go all what we are discussing based on some very standard texts, like Acharya Chandigarh's text, then go to um, Arinikarjuna's text, and then go to Buddha's sutras. That would be wonderful. So, I really appreciate the uh, your questions, your answers. <coughs> your name? Andre. In fact, the, uh, the question asked by Andre is a very important question. And the response given from the lady, the Shweta. What's your name, her name? Sweta. And uh, her answer is also very precise. What she said, and in fact what Andrea said, is that the ultimate analysis from one impression that he got, from one impression, the one impression that she, he got, is that you look at the flower with ultimate analysis, the ultimate analysis, then you see the atoms, one. And the next time, when we talk about the ultimate analysis, we talk about the emptiness. So how do you relate the two, atoms and emptiness? This question. And the, the Sweta answer that she gave is that same object, same object, when you analyze, you don't see the same object, you see something else. And uh, what we see something else, it doesn't mean that you see emptiness, but you don't see the same object. So what that object, from this we come to know that that a perception makes a difference. How you perceive, from distance, from close by, the perception changes, and then your view of the object changes. But it doesn't directly correlate with the atoms, with the emptiness. You're getting it? Okay, good answer, good question. And the gentleman over there, what is that is also the same. The flower, very similar to the flower, the color, shape, and so forth. When you go into a little deeper analysis, you see the color, shape, and all the attributes of the same object disappears. What you see is emptiness. In experience emptiness, none of these color, shape, and so forth exists. Okay, so still, the, um, that, the Andrea's question is not fully answered. You're getting it? Not fully answered. The what two of them said is that the same, the same object when analyze, you can find something different, like atoms and so forth, but atoms do not mean emptiness. So this is a very good question. You don't get this still you don't get the answer. Still you do not get the answer. Yes. So for this for to get the real answer, we need to we need to be introduced to the concept of entities and isolates. Entities and concept of entities and isolates, and also the concept concept of concept of positive and negative phenomena. If you don't introduce these two concepts, Andrea's question cannot be resolved. And Andre, thank you for bringing me to these two concepts. So these two concepts are extremely important concepts for us to know. What are the two concepts? Entities and isolates, and then positive and negative phenomena. Okay, good. Before this, they, I like to um, they say, for us to understand what emptiness is, we need to think of many examples. For example, in this book, we see that, uh, do you see, in the mornings we read something, in the mornings like the star, the mirage, and so forth, you remember? We read something, can you see that? Can you show that to me? Can you show that to me, where is it, where, from this book, where, where, where it is? The mirage, the dream, stars, stars. Huh? Hey, the Russian, they already said it. English, nobody's saying it. Yes. Stars 15. Okay, page 15. Very good. Page 15. 
verse number eight. <coughs> this verse is actually taken from this verse is taken from Vajra Chetika Sutra, Diamond Kata Sutra, Intiban Dojichoba, Diamond Kata Sutra. It is taken out from a sutra. It's not that these are all together. This is all compiled together. This verse is precisely taken out from Vajra Kata Sutra or Diamond Kata Sutra. Diamond Kata Sutra. So let's see that there are so many examples given there. It says, A star. A star. You know, about the concept of the emptiness and conventional truth. Conventional truth and the emptiness. So, when do you see the stars? In the night or in the daytime? In the night. We see, hey, all of us, don't think that there's somebody, people who will take the responsibility to give the answer for me. Right? Okay, when do you see the stars? Sun is also a star. You are right, but sun is not a conventional star. It's a technically it's a star. Conventional is not a star. You're getting it? Okay, we are talking about the conventional, right? Don't distract me. I've no, I've no one I've no one year time with you. Don't distract me. Your name? Uh, so, Alex, don't distract me. When I ask something, but you when something very conventional, give it direct answer. Don't disturb me. If you disturb me, then you say that, oh, this is star, why not the moon? And then we keep like this. And then the time is over. You're getting it? So let's not distract too much. So when do you see the stars? Night. Are you good? The night resembles ignorance. In night, you don't see the reality. You don't see what is around you. And the ignorance blurs you from having the vision of the reality. You don't see the reality. So night resembles ignorance. With ignorance, self-grasping ignorance, all the stars like food, flower, you know, they, they, this person, that person, cheesecake, momos, they all come. They all like the stars. They arise in the darkness of ignorance. So, all the conventional realities, conventional realities, conventional truth, seen from distance or from close by? Hey, conventional truth seen from close, close by or from distance? From far, from distance, which means that from distance you don't see the reality, right? So, all the conventional truth that we see, they're all like the things that we are seeing in the darkness, in dark, the stars are visible. Likewise, all conventional truths, they arise when we are in the grip of self-grasping ignorance. You fall asleep, you fall asleep, the dreams arise. You're getting it? Dreams arise when you fall asleep. The dreams never arise when you are fully woken up. So, Dreams arise when you fall asleep. Dream sleeping is metaphor for ignorance. With this ignorance, then all the dream contents are created, right? And then you are sucked up by the dream. In the dream, there's so much attachment, anger, fear, all these things happen in the dream. Yes. How many in the dream? You start to cry sometimes, sometimes laugh, sometimes are happy, sometimes fear resents in the dream. In the dream. Okay, look, what happens to those things which make you cry, smile, laugh, fun, and so forth? The moment you wake up, what happened to, what, what happened to these things? Disappear. Because these are all created by your ignorance. You're getting it? So all the conventional things are created by the conventional analysis. Conventional analysis. Conventional analysis is not reliable. We said, right? Ultimate analysis is more reliable. Conventional analysis is not reliable. How many agree with me? Do you sense? We, we said it, right? So with this, that what we're seeing, they are like the stars, which, are, which come to visibility only when the dark fall, darkness falls. 
In darkness, in dark, only then the stars become visible. With ignorance, only the conventional truths, they come into existence. You are getting it? This is an extremely powerful example, star. Next, a visual aberration. Visual aberration is like a ghost. The ghost. The ghost, which is, they say, the, the ghost appears as a human being. And suddenly you see it disappears. You see that it's not really a human being. It appears as a human being, but it's not. It appears one way, but it's empty the way it appears. A flame of lamp. A flame of lamp. So the same, the emptiness means dependent origination. You're getting it? The flame will continue to burn as long as the oil is there. The moment the oil is gone, the flame stops. Flame extinguishes. You're getting it? Dependent origination. An illusion. Illusion is what? You see something, but actually it does not exist that way. It appears as real, but it's empty of being real. So all what is happening around, all what is happening around, right? So this is all like illusion. Okay, look at somebody sitting next to you. Look at somebody sitting next to you. Some people are so smart, they want to look at everybody like this. Right, right left, everyone. Okay, look at somebody next to you. Look at somebody next to you. Okay, most of you are smiling. You're getting it? Believe it or not, when you study emptiness, when you get some understanding of emptiness, what made you smile is not really there. What made you smile is actually not really there. Believe it or not. You're getting it? Okay. If you look at the empty space, and if you start smiling, people kill, think that you're crazy. You're getting it? Actually, there's nothing to smile about. Do you agree with me that the face which made you smile, that face is nothing but made of atoms? Yes? In amidst the atoms, there's no face. Yes? There's nothing which makes you smile. Yes? Yes? In the atoms, there's nothing which makes you smile. Only if you are part of physicists. Only if you are part of physicists, you are forced and amused by the electrons, protons. Otherwise, for us, what is this? So boring to see atoms. You know? It's not making you smile. Right? And you will not jump from one group of atoms to another group of atoms. Right? At the moment, some of you are doing like this, like this, like this. Right? You are jumping from one to the other. When you see just everything is just a bunch of atoms, you will not jump from one to the other. There's nothing that will make you smile. What made you smile is actually what conventional truth, ultimate truth. Conventional truth. Conventional truth means it's purely coming from your mind. If, of how it appears to your mind, that's it. That's it. There's nothing really from the object. Okay. My next so therefore, the, the, these examples, we have to think of these examples. Try to bring as many examples as possible. And one point I'd like to share with you. In these, all these, say, the, the teachings, sharings, one thing I really like personally, myself, and I like others also to know, is that if you look at the children, small children, do you notice that some children, they're easily affected, say, the, say everybody's given, say all small children, given chocolates. And then the, say, you snatch the chocolate, chocolate one, one person and you just exchange it. The moment you do it, the other child freaks or is so upset. And some children, they're very calm. It doesn't really matter. Same age, right? Usually, the girls are more stable, boys are more agitated at that age. At least, I don't know, right? At that age, girls are more stable. Boys can easily become you know, very naughty or hyper. 
But within the boys, within the girls, we see that they again there's a difference. Some are very calm, gentle, not affected, and some are easily affected. You notice that? You notice that? This is so important. And most likely, those who are easily affected, these people will not be really happy in their life, these children, generally speaking. Those who are more calm, more controlled, their life will be very meaningful. Okay. Now the next question is, oh, which of the two child do you want to be? You want to be the, if you have to take birth next life. Which of the two child do you like to become? The one who is more calm, not affected by what other people do, or who is easily affected with what other does to you? Tell me. Calm one. If you really want to do that, this is all because of the previous causes. Ye Dharma Hetu Prabhava. All this for the previous causes. Not that, oh, this child, because of the parents. No. Thought processes is not with the parents. Genetics, physical formation, and so forth. Parents and the karma together. But thinking is purely yours. Nothing to do with the parents. Thinking is purely yours. What you've brought from your past life. So in this life, if you next life, if you want to go gade gade para gade para sam gade buruswa, you have to prove that you are a different child. You and I, we all have to prove that we are a different child, right? Right from the beginning, say very stable, calm. His holiness, the Dalai Lama, you won't believe. When he was two or three years old, watch that document, documentary film. You must watch that. His Holiness the Dalai Lama, when he was just two or three years old, look at his composure. Right? Say though, the, all the, the, aristocrats, the Tibetan aristocrats were standing, and then the Chinese, the CC, not CCP, Hu Yopang, the Chinese, the, the, what I think he is a Muslim, the Chinese made the chieftain of that area, was there. And everybody is respecting him, but this little boy, just two or three years old, right? And he's on a chair, and he's looking at the, the chieftain, Chinese chieftain, where everybody, to whom everybody is respecting. And this boy, not like playful, not like scared, he was just looking, staring like this, and just giving a very mild smile, not a full smile, not fear. Just give him a mild smile, but a very, you know, say composed smile, like this. Wow. This even the elders cannot demonstrate it. So this all the mental maturation. You're getting it? So look at such a young age. Now today, look, his holiness. Everybody wants to see his face. Everybody wants to just have a glimpse of him. There's something different there. So how come that he developed this quality from many past lives? So this is how we go gade gade para gade para sam gade bodhiswa. Never ever just be trapped all the, the, the time in samsara, samsara, samsara. I'm talking to you. And meanwhile, I'm also so happy. Sometimes I think that if I note down these points and later next life, I'll be so happy to read this for myself, right? I'm craving to get this information. Because this is the only way how we can exit out of samsara. Otherwise, samsara is extremely painful, extremely painful. We have to, we have to keep shedding tears after tears after tears endlessly. So, the same, we have how weak we are to the emotions, to the emotions. So these say, the small child, so they easily become agitated just by exchanging the same chocolate, your chocolate, but somebody just, just to tease the person or to provoke the child, you just pull it and give the other chocolate, and the other child will th thinks that, they now I'm getting the bad one, right? It will scream. Some are very calm, composed. If you're not happy, okay, is it same or not? If it's the same, who cares? It's little boy, little girl, right? So, if you want to become one like that, what should we do? Train now. 
train now. You're getting it? We have to train now in this life. Try as much as possible to see emptiness in this life. Try as much as possible to practice bodhicitta. With the bodhicitta, again, you will not be affected what the other people do to you. With the wisdom and emptiness, you will become very calm and you see, you start to see things from a very broad picture. Small things will not matter. If you earn only, say, $100 per month, then losing $10 is a big matter, big issue. But if you earn like $100,000 per month, $10 is nothing, it will not affect you. You're getting it? So therefore, say, next life, but it take birth, say, we talk about the, say, the emotions. Emotions are mainly related to, um, say, the hormonal the changes. So with the hormonal changes, we become so weak, we become so vulnerable. So if you practice emptiness, but it's in this life stably, then next life, say, hormonal changes happen, it is like another person watching another person. You will not be affected. This is so precious. There's so much control within yourself. It is like another person watching another person, right? Hormone change is like another person and you are watching it. You are not affected. This is so, this is how we can free ourselves from the destructive emotions. How? How? No, control yourself. What control yourself? We have to prepare it. This life, prepare it. As much as possible, prepare yourself. Prepare myself, ourselves in this life. This is so precious. Okay, having said this, so how to prepare, be consistent with these studies? I'm so glad that I can see some of you, that you, the, many of the answers coming. I can see that many of you are from NDC, NMC. I can see that from the answers coming. Um, somehow in a life, don't think, don't ever, even if you are being very consistent with your studies, don't ever think that, okay, I'm now complete with my NMC, finish. Now I will do something else. If this is an approach, just remember the really enlightened masters in the Manas universities. They spent 20, 30 years into 365, into minimum 10, 12 hours a day. And then compared with what you study, which is so, so small in comparison with what they did. So naturally, the result is going to be different. So therefore, we should be wise in this life. So I personally, on the one hand, coming to attend these teachings, I feel that this is very important because there are so many people who are getting connected with this, the teaching of the Narada Masters, one. Number two, that I personally benefit a lot. I personally benefit a lot. Always being, say, coming to these retreats, we talk about emptiness, your mind is being activated. And then when I do my personal practice, emptiness, emptiness becomes much clearer in comparison with what I'm by myself doing my practice. It's very different. Both each other, again, sitting together and just telling you, reflect on the meanings. Don't just let the words flow alone reflect the meanings, then I'm also making sure the meanings are reflected there, and then the group collective effort that they say even the feelings are different, both your feelings are different. So this is how we have to grow. This is the only way how to grow. We can grow like this. Okay. So on the consistent studies, right? And later on, you after like 10 years, 20 years, and that you may feel like spending more time on your own for your practice. Still, my teacher, Venerable Keshe Wanchan Rinpoche, some of you must have heard about him, and just be with him. You'll see that, and lucky that he speaks English, and he passed away. And he was the, he was one of the primary teachers of the present Ling Rinpoche. And the, just be with him, it's amazing. So when I completed my Geshe degree, said he advised me that, Damdul, now that you completed your studies, don't think that you completed your studies. Whatever to be done, do. 
alongside always make sure that what you've studied before this um, revised one after the keep revising keep, keep revising keep going through this the throughout your life and alongside your practice and alongside service for the buddha dharma this is advice okay so particularly when i see some of the answers coming there i'm really very inspired so this is what i have to share with you what i feel very strongly myself and this is what i have to share with you same in future lifetimes, if you want to go gade gade, right? What we are today in this life, small child, child of somebody snatches, you know, and then it's like this. Next time also same, next time also same. No gade gade. Then we have to continue to shed tears after tears after tears. Whereas, okay, this life, exchange with you, uh, say somebody, forcefully exchange the chocolates, you start become hyper, shed you know, become angry, upset, so forth. Next life, shed, you exchange the chocolates. You just think, is the same or not? It's the same. Who cares? It's fine. If this change happening, change happening, you are following the gade gade. It is so precious. Okay. So, as a part of the studies, think about these examples. As many examples you can think of how things can come into being by the part of your mind. For example, like the star, a visual aberration, a flame lamp, an illusion, a drop of dew. So some of these examples are purely for impermanent nature, impermanent. Some of them are for the emptiness. Drop of dew, or a bubble, a dream, a flash of lightning, a cloud. See, condition things as such. I remember the cloud. It's so beautiful. <clears throat> My teacher, Venerable Keshe of the Mandata Varimbache, some of you must have already heard about, heard about it, heard about him. Um, in my classes, I say, when I must be in my 20s, I was being tutored by him in the Wunderstil Monastery, and they, in the evenings, in the evenings, I would escort him for his evening walk. And we'll go into the field, we'll sit down, and then the, um, he would say, he would point to the, the clouds. He would say that, look at these clouds. So look, example given there. So these are the great masters who see everything in the light of emptiness and bodhicitta. He said, he would call me, uh, he would call me, how oh, he called me, even that I forgot. Damdil, Dorji. His son is called me Damdil. And the, my teacher will call me Dorji. I think Dorji, yeah. So, Dorji, look, these clouds, they seem so stable. They seem so stable. They so, so independent. And actually, they are all this. How can they possibly sit in the air without being supported by anything? We see that as so independent there, sitting in the air, independent there. It is not like this. It's all because of the dependent origination. But dependent so many factors that this cloud shake a particular, took a particular shape and even how it remains suspended, appears like suspended in the air. It's because of the combination of the, the air, air molecules from the down. And the, the difference in the weight, difference of weight, temperature, and so forth, that we see the that this comes into existence, not independently there. So somebody cloud bottom, keep it up there in the air, and this is there. No, it's not like that. But dependent on multiple factors that this cloud came to, and they came into existence, origination, dependent origination. So this is how we need to. Think of this is how my teacher would advise me. So here it says cloud. See condition things as such. Okay. So we need to think of as many examples. So with this in mind, the I like to take us to what is known what is the say the, the in the context of state of emptiness and the pairs, say five sets of five sets of pair. Let's say the first, the subjective as opposed to subjective as opposed to 
objective. Very good. So we're going to learn these pairs so that things will become clear in our mind. And in the first place, of course, the say the clarity of emptiness will come to us. Number two, your intelligence will grow. Because emptiness is something, emptiness is not that somebody gives you information and you learn it and you get emptiness. It, will ne it doesn't work like this. Okay, let's say that the... Um, okay, let's say that I want extremely good paintings. Let's say I want extremely good paintings. And then, okay, that's fine, you'll paint. And for a good painting, what do you require? You require the high quality canvas, yes, high quality the colors, the paints, yes, high quality brush, yes, okay, I'll buy and give it to you, right? And you and you, and the good painting comes out or not? Huh? The painter skills, you're getting it? It's not that just the raw material is given to you and then the Michelangelo's painting comes out. No, it doesn't happen like this. These are the material things, but skill is required from the individual. Likewise, okay, emptiness. It is like, so emptiness, I find not the positive and negative phenomena, the anti and so forth, and the true analysis and so forth. And then, well, now you got emptiness. No, it depends on your intelligence. Like the painter skills. Your intelligence is required for you to get emptiness. Emptiness is like the beautiful painting. Beautiful painting for that, we require the good canvas, good paper, good paint, and what else? Good brush, and also good skill of the painter. Likewise, you are the painter, right? And if you don't have the skill of the intelligence, this intelligence is a skill. If you don't have this, you cannot pick up emptiness. You cannot pick up the good painting. You're getting it? Your intelligence is so important. And some of you may think that, okay, now the last four days, there was so much hope. I, I thought I'm going to get emptiness. Now today he said that we should be very intelligent. I'm not intelligent. No way now. I give up. Even intelligence is dependently originated. You're getting it? The fact that you think that you are not intelligent, this is also dependent originated. In reality, we all have the Buddha nature. We all have the Buddha nature. So, what is intelligence? What is no intelligence? And even in group discussions, you may be so fascinated by some who are so bright. And I'm, you know, how come that these people, they come, come up with these, you know, the very good questions? And no question comes to my mind. You may think like this. What we suggest is that you may think that Oh, he's inspiring us. He is encouraging us. This is not reality, but he's encouraging us, right? Learn to make us not feel demoralized. But I'll give an example. How dependent origination. You can change if you are if your if your intelligence is mediocre, average. How to change it from the average to the sharp intelligence, the good intelligence? How to shift it there? Knowing that your lack of intelligence also dependent originated, knowing that intelligence also dependent or originated. So, one thing is that for a good painting, we need two things the painter's skill as well as the materials. Likewise, materials are the, corpor the corporator, what is that? Cooperative causes, cooperative conditions. And the painter skill is the main skill required, primary course. Likewise, for you to cultivate this intelligence, there are two things, primary course and the cooperative, co cooperative courses. Primary course is that the, we have to, we have to keep our mind exercised. Exercise through, through proper learning through brilliant the exercises. These brilliant exercises are given by the Buddha Shakyamuni, by Arunigarjuna, right? So, otherwise there are so many, they say the, what we call as the gurus, you know, and thousands, millions of followers are there, and what you get? It's just, you get rubbish. Whereas, follow Arunigarjuna, 
you will have a brilliant your intelligence really grow you're getting it so one is the, your intelligence you should do exercise with the help of this arinigarjuna's text the buddha's teachings arinigarjuna's teachings acharya chandragupta's teachings and commentary by lama tsongkhapa alongside the cooperative courses include like supporting others encouraging others to study these are the cooperative courses instead of being jealous instead of being jealous try to support others encourage others and those who are doing good just deep inside rejoice wow this is so good i rejoice and if the rejoice does not come right does not come don't worry then you know why rejoice is not coming in me for example lama subarambache he is a great example of somebody who rejoices in others good, others good qualities and his holiness the dalai lama you won't believe his holiness the dalai lama when he hears about somebody else something having done something good instantly his holiness just you look at his, his body language instantly he becomes so happy you get it this is rejoice so how this rejoice comes say you do so good say you are a small child little girl a little boy you got so good in your school you are the top of the school the result came you are the top of the school and your mother and the neighbor's mother who do you think will rejoice and who do you think will be jealous of you huh mother will jealous huh mother will rejoice be so happy proud of you and the neighbor's mother if somebody is jealous would be the neighbor's mother not your mother right why 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 quick 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 it's not philosophy that's very easy huh so why anyone okay no they don't be negative attachment no be positive affection love mother's love you're getting it mother's love so if the rejoice is not coming somebody is doing so good and rejoice is not coming what is lacking is love is lacking you're getting it you are you have to identify where, where i'm going wrong where i'm going missing where what things are missing in me identify them fix them your dharma practices everything is in your hand when you don't identify these okay he asks us to rejoice but okay i rejoice in you no <laughs> deep inside this jealousy coming right okay no hope so what do we do is that he asks us to rejoice but i the rejoice is not coming so what's wrong with me right and don't think that i'm hopeless right is there if in the world is there somebody who can rejoice in somebody else's success in the world very common you should the mothers they rejoice they take pride in the success of their children you agree most of the mothers like 99% of the mothers right some may not be okay then okay why how come that this person gets this feeling to feeling to rejoice in someone else's success because of the affection Oh, is I don't feel that, I don't feel the affection towards the person. Yes. So where can I learn this affection from? I'm going to give you a check. Where can I learn this affection from? Where? Oh, this whole book known as Guide to the Bodhisattva Way of Life, which talks about affection, how to cultivate affection, right? Okay. So you read this, study this, and then practice it. Then your compassion grows. Then rejoice starts to come. You're getting it? Oh yeah, these are so beautiful. This known as dependent origination, which is a reality, but it is explicitly taught by the Buddha Shakyamuni on the planet Earth. We are so lucky to have met with this teaching of the Buddha Shakyamuni. Okay, so um, the with this in mind, we are talking about objective, but subjective as opposed to objective. Number one, pair number one. Pair number two, conventional as opposed to ultimate.
conventional as opposed to ultimate number two. Number three, dependent as opposed to independent. Very good. Deceptive as opposed to true. Deceptive existence as opposed to true existence. Number five, relative as opposed to relative as opposed to absolute, right? It's relative. No, it's absolute. <laughs> okay. Relative as opposed to absolute. How many pairs did you learn? How many pairs did you get? Let me repeat it. Right? Four or five? Five. Okay, number one. What is number one? Obje subjective as opposed to objective. Number two? Conventional as opposed to ultimate. Number three? Dependent as opposed to independent. What is next? Deceptive as opposed to true. Finally, relative as opposed to absolute. You're getting it? Okay, so first, first, see if you can have these five. And then, same, not same, all these things we'll discuss later. You're getting it? Okay, no hurry. Have patience. Right? Number one. What is number one? Subjective as opposed to objective. Number two. Conventional as opposed to ultimate. Number three. Independent as opposed to Independent. Number four. Hey, number four. Deceptive as opposed to true. Number five. Relative as opposed to absolute. You're getting it? Okay. Okay, the Russian, they're not too happy. Tell me what's the problem. Which one? Say, which one? Okay, so what is very important, so this is where I said, this morning I said it, that the translators have a huge responsibility. You're getting it? So we should know the nuances and so forth. Okay, conventional. So first, the uh, let's say, uh, we first make the distinction between conventional and relative. You're getting it? Conventional and relative, these two are not identical. There's a slight difference there. In other words, in, sh see, in the first place, I would agree that, say, the objective, no, subjective, then conventional, dependent, deceptive, relative, they all mean the same. You're getting it? I give you five pairs. You're getting it? Of the five pairs, the first five and the, the, the corresponding pairs, the first five, they all mean the same, but they have a slight different meanings. For example, like spaghetti and chomen. Actually the same. No? It's the same. It's just the same noodle. Right? Spaghetti and chomen is the same. When in Italy, it becomes spaghetti. Same thing when brought to China, it becomes chomen. Right? It's the same thing. Right? So, the point is that, the point is that, the Chinese they may put a little bit of sesame seed up there, and the in Italy it may they put a little bit of olive oil, it becomes spaghetti, right? In China they put a little bit of sesame seed and garlic, it becomes chomen, right? It's just the same thing. So likewise, these five, what are they? Subjective, conventional, dependent, deceptive, relative. These five mean the same. What are the opposites? Objective, ultimate, huh? Dependent, 
independent, <laughs> true, absolute, they mean the same. You're getting it? But, but, they, they say, don't just think that, oh, they mean the same. Don't do like this, don't be lazy. We must go through the subtle differences. There's a reason why these five are taught separately. There are subtle differences there. You're getting it? Say the same noodle, you put sesame and a little bit of garlic and a little bit of soy sauce, it becomes chowmin. Right? So those people who are so expert in chowmin, they think that I don't know chowmin. <laughs> right? Chowmin is not that simple. And then you put a little olive oil, it becomes spaghetti. Right? All these tomato sauce and what? A little bit of the olive oil, it becomes the spaghetti. So the point is that these five, they have subtle differences. They will all point to the same point. For example, let's say Nick, right? So Nick says that, where is the, I, I asked Nick, where's the center? Where's the, where's the central pillar? He will point to his, his, what? Towards his north, towards the northeast. And I ask Yamuna, where is the central pillar? She'll point to the, the what? South, southeast, southeast, southeast. So they all point to different, different directions, but they're actually the same, right? You're getting it? Do you understand it? For, for the, say like Bemla, where point to what? Southwest. And then the way, but the, over there, Somebody point to the what? North, northwest. They point to two different, four different directions, but they actually point to the same pillar. You're getting it? So these five have different, different connotations, but they point to the same understanding. They mean the same. How? For this, before we go through this in more detail, let me first clarify the difference between what is conventional and what is relative. Right, so me being the translator myself, right? I know all these complications. I know all these difficulties as a translator. So, the for example, like the conventional and relative. What's the difference? I'll explain this very quickly. Say, okay. What is this? Huh? Some say two fingers, some say victory, some say peace. You're getting it? Some say peace. And what is this? Now two sets of V, two sets, which in two pieces. Two piece. No, this is peace. And next piece come. And so for two piece, one piece, one piece, two piece. Right? Right? Okay. What is this? Good. What is this? Two goods. No. Why this is good? Tell me. Why? Why this is peace? Tell me. Why? It's purely convention. It's not relativity. It's not relative. It's not relativity. It's just a convention. So this is understanding of conventionality. You're getting it? Convention is different from relativity. But they will point to the same point later on. So this is convention. For example, say, okay, don't feel, okay, sometimes, if I, even if I say that don't feel offended, people feel offended, what do you do? Right? Okay. Say, um, the tie, the tie, Right? So when you go to a very formal party, formal party, you put in the tie, bow tie, or the tie, and suit, instead of boot, you go for the, uh, the what is that? Bathroom chapel, bathroom slippers, right? All, uh, it's a, what's wrong? What's the problem? People will kick you out. You're getting it? The moment they see this, they'll kick you out. Why? Why tell me? Tell me, tell me. Oh, how many of you will feel really this is not really proper? 
Raise hands. Be very honest. You may not kick the person, but at least you will think that it is not really proper you know, etiquette, right? Dress code, right? Raise hands. Okay. Tell me why it is improper. Tell me why. Yes. Okay, and how does it look, how does it appear to you? When you see that, what is, what, how does it appear to you? Something uneasy has come to you? Huh? Some uneasy, uneasy feeling comes to you or not? Be very honest. No, <laughs> when you say no, it means uneasy is coming to you. Why? What's the problem? What's the problem? Um, it's purely convention. You're getting it? It's purely convention. There's no reason why this is not the etiquette. You're getting it? What is this? You say them today, today, I don't know today, maybe I, when I, maybe like 10, 15 years ago, if the boys, particularly the boys, sometimes even the girls also, if you don't have a gene with the torn knees, if you don't have a gene with torn knees, you are, you are a, what? Something's wrong with you. There's some damage to your brain. Something's wrong. Oh, you must be very poor. Right? And the pain should go down. Pain should go down. It shouldn't be up. It should go down. Then it becomes decent. That's a proper. Pain should go down and should be toned. And when I was small, if this is how you put the pen with the knees, everybody will come donate. Everybody will come to donate the, the pens for you. You're getting it? Everybody come to donate pens for you. Lucky I don't see anybody with the torn knees, right? So I think about 10 years ago, 20 years ago, it used to be like a, what do you call it, fashion. What is it? Torn, the pen with the decolorized. Deliberately the factories make it decolorized, right? So if you don't have it, something's wrong with you. You must have it. But 40 years ago, if you come with this, people think that poor guy, they will ask for fund fundraising for you. You're getting it? Where lies the difference? Tell me why. It's purely convention. You're getting it? Purely convention. That is not relative. It's convention. It's pure convention. What is relative? What is relative? These two are different. Even the words, we must look for different words. In some language, in some languages, they may not be different words. Me as a translator, you know, one time I was somebody is translating a text into Hebrew. There was many years ago, almost like 20, 20 years ago, 20, 17 years ago. And then the I said that it should be translated this. And the person said that there's no such word like this in Hebrew. And I fully agree with this. For example, same you have to say that the um but in English. There are few things in English which in Tibetan we don't have. In Tibetan we don't you we don't require in English you have to add these words. The moment you add these words in Tibetan it can change the meaning. You getting it? This is how the language works. So I really empathize with the translators, but we have to try our best. Conventional and relativity. What is relativity? Same. The um <clears throat> same. Is this pen good or bad? It's a relative, right? So, for example, somebody presented me with, with one pen, and I was really... By the way, now I start losing interest in pen also. Earlier, I was so finicky. What's the word finicky? Huh? Picky. Very particular. Perfectionist, crazy, crazy after, very good pens, very good pens, or pencil, lead pencil. So, what kind of disease, I don't know. <laughs> what disease, I don't know. When I go to the shops, particularly airport shops, my eyes go after the pens and the pencils. Pencils, right? If there is a very expensive, okay, so now, don't worry about that. Okay, so now what present we give to him, I know, right? That was 20 years ago, not now, right? Now I'll not disclose what I want. 20 years ago, my eye goes up, my eyes go up. The shops, good shops there. 
It was a pen. Not ball pen. A fountain pen. Fountain pen, not just cheap ones. Really good ones. Where you write it, not just expensive. Not expensive. It should be really good. Lead pencil, really good. Even if it is very expensive, I don't mind paying. It doesn't matter. Right? If I have 10 of them, if I get somebody present any extra, I don't mind getting it. Right? Now I lost interest in this. I don't know why. Age? I don't know. Okay. So what I'm saying is, what is relative? Is this pen good or bad? To make it short, that this pen, I don't know how it writes. So it writes, sometimes it gets stuck, right? And this is far better than another pen which doesn't write at all, right? But it is hopeless. You write something, very important document with a bank check, and then it gets stuck somewhere, no incoming. Then you get another pen, it writes so well, this is good. So this is, this is bad in, in relative to the other one which writes very well. It is good relative to the the pen which does not write at all. This is relativity. You're getting it? So there should be, in fact, I would say that there should be um, the say two different words. Then if not, then we can't do anything. This is the, the language issue. So this is the difference between relativity and conventionality, the difference. But you will point to this same point eventually. You're getting it? So this we'll study a little later. Okay. Eyata om gate gate paragate parasam gate bodhiswatyata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasam Gate Bodhiswatyata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasam gate bodhiswaha. Three prostrations. <laughs>